Welcome to the first of several MetaTrader 4 tutorials from Alpari. My name is John Jagerson and I'll be your host. In this particular video presentation we're going to be going over some of the uh, most frequently asked questions and a few uh, tips that you can use as you start to uh, begin using the MetaTrader 4 application. Before we jump into that, let's just review the components of the MetaTrader 4 application, the default layout that you uh, uh, first see when you download the and start the application itself. There's really two types of components. The first is, of course, the charting applications, and it's what you would expect to see in a best-of-breed uh, charting application. Uh, this is where a lot of Forex traders spend their time, so obviously it's where you want to make sure uh, you have some of your best functionality, and this is where you will find it. We're going to be digging much deeper into the charting functionality in other tutorials. The other type of application or module that's available here on the MetaTrader 4 application uh, start o over here on the left hand side with Market Watch. Uh, as you can see, we've got the major forex pairs listed here and bid at ask prices. So you can see uh, what's the what's the current quote for all of these, uh, both the both the sell price as well as the buy price. We're going to be digging in a little deeper into uh, this little feature as well. But uh, uh, I should mention that there you can expand these columns uh, and customize it to really see the information that you would like to see. The navigator works like any file tree uh, navigation system that you might see in another application or another Windows application. Uh, finally, underneath all of that is the terminal. This is where you can receive information from messages from uh, Alpari themselves. You can access some account information for yourself. You can track your trades down here as well. So it gives you a nice clean snapshot all together as to what's going on in the market and what's going on in my account. So let's jump in and start answering some of those frequently asked questions that we get from traders uh, just beginning to use the MetaTrader application. And if you've been using it for a while, uh, these tutorials should introduce you to a few things you may have missed in the past. Let's start with the Market Watch uh, module. And one of the most common questions that we get is this time. What is that time? What time zone is that exactly? Because it may or may not be the same time zone you're in. Well, there's an easy answer to that. The uh, time zone used here is Central European time. And the reason why it's used that way is it helps to avoid the Sunday bars. If you've been in the Forex for very long, you know that uh, uh, there really is no Sunday session. The market's essentially closed Saturday and Sunday, uh, or, or at least most dealers are not taking trades during those periods of time, and now Pari's no exception. So uh, depending on where you are and where your charting package, uh, what the time zone is your charting package is set to, you may get little fractional bars opened on Sunday afternoon. Uh, this can really mess with a uh, from a technical perspective it can uh, mess with your technical indicators as well as charting patterns etc and lead to some erroneous conclusions so starting it in Central European time make sure that the Monday session starts the Monday candle we don't have any of those little orphaned candles uh, left over from Sunday if you want to know what the time is in your time zone look at your watch now you've probably noticed that over here in my market watch window um, I have very few Forex pairs listed. In fact, I've kept it to mostly just the majors. And depending on uh, when you downloaded your MetaTrader 4 application or what kinds of settings you've been playing with, you may have a small list here as well. Well, this is not comprehensive of all the pairs that are available. You may want to see a comprehensive list. Well, that's really easy. Just put your cursor in the Market Watch window. I've just got mine arbitrarily right here in the middle. You make a right click, it's going to open up a little sub menu. Under that submenu, I'm going to select Show All, and as you can see, it's expanded my list. So now I've got everything that's offered from Alpari, which is quite a list, all the way from the top to the bottom. By the way, this means that the candles in the charts themselves are rolling over at the end of the day, Central European time. Now you've probably noticed, looking at the Market Watch window, that the decimal places are being carried out beyond the traditional fourth decimal place. So this pip is being further divided into a tenth out here in the fifth decimal place. Or with uh, yen quoted pairs, we've got a third decimal place. This is out beyond what you would see from a traditional Forex dealer. And this is one of the great things with working with Alpari. Why are they going out like that? Well, uh, if you can divide that pip into further smaller segments, that means that in a liquid market, they can give you better pricing. So being able to deal with fractional pips, if you will, out here on the fifth decimal place gives them a pricing advantage, which 
as Forex traders all know, trading costs are critical. Being able to save trading costs makes a huge difference. So even a fractional pip is going to make a difference, particularly if you're an active trader. Now you can see this fifth decimal place reflected not only in the quotes here in the market watch window, but within the charts themselves. So for example, I'm going to expand the Euro USD chart and you can see up here along the top, uh, these quotes are being carried out to the uh, fifth decimal place and along the Y axis, we've got the fifth decimal place reflected there as well. The trend towards tighter dealing spreads has been uh, going on for a long time and it's nice to be working with a dealer who is trying to uh, think one step ahead uh, to be able to cut those, uh, those dealing costs as, uh, as liquidity continues to grow in the Forex. I mentioned before how important charts are for Forex traders and that's because so many of us are technicians. Well, technical analysts are worried not only about where prices are right now, but where prices have been. Now, this leads to me to uh, explain one of the other questions that we get quite a bit, which is, if I'm trying to look at past prices, so I'm scrolling back here into the past, into February, and I want to do some kind of analysis back here in March, why is it that my chart then zooms right back to the current price? I can't do my analysis back in March because I keep getting back, uh, shoved back here in, in, into November. Well, what that is, that's just auto scrolling, which uh, when it's in play here on your Forex chart, that means that you're not going to move, miss any price moves. Now, that's great if you're looking at the current price. You want to make sure, especially looking at a very short term chart, you want to make sure you're not missing a breakout by looking at some past data. But if you're trying to do some analysis, you want to turn that off. It's really easy. Right up here above the chart, we've got a button that's depressed right now, and you'll notice it has a little pop-up hint that says auto scroll. If I select that, it's going to turn that feature off. So now I can move my charts back here into February and March, and it's not going to update as prices change. If I want to turn that feature back on, it's easy. All I have to do is click the button again. You can see it's depressed, and the next time we see a price change, the chart is going to automatically update and go all the way over to the far right. And there we go. While we're looking at the charts, let's answer a question that we get quite a bit about the prices on the right-hand side. What price is that exactly? As everybody knows, no matter what uh, capital market you're trading, there's typically two prices. There's the buy price and there's the sell price, the bid and the ask. So what's being charted here? Well, it's the bid price. That means it's the price you sell a currency, a currency pair at. Now, what if you want to change that? What if you want to see the ask price? Can you add that to the chart? And you can. It's relatively simple to do. All you have to do is put your cursor right here in the middle of the charting window, make a right click, and you're going to get a little submenu that, that opens up. Down at the bottom of that is a link for properties. We're going to select that. Now what that'll do is open up a little uh, dialog box here. There's two tabs up at the top, colors and common. We're going to be on common. And over here on the far, uh, the lower right hand side, we've got a radio box that says show ask line. If I select that, and then click OK. It'll add an ask price. Now, it's, you probably noticed you can't hardly see it. Well, the spread's so tight, you, you can't really tell the difference when you're looking at a daily chart. You can see that up here. I have Euro USD daily. So if I shorten my time frame where the smaller moves are much, much larger uh, magnified here on the chart, we should be able to see both of those lines and we can see the difference between a very tight spread on the Euro USD. So I'm going to right up here, you'll notice I have some toggle boxes to change the time frame. Right now it's set to daily and I'm going to change it to a one minute chart. And here we go. So we can see the bid price right there and just above that in red, that's the ask price. So that's the buy price for this particular currency pair. You can apply this to any of the currency pairs and on some of the crosses you may get a little bit of a wider spread and on the majors you should see something that's fairly tight like this but it'll give you a good idea particularly if you're working in the very short term charts it'll give you a good idea as to how far away am I from my relative limit or stop losses uh, whichever price may be in effect for your order. Now we can change our time frame back very easily just up here with the to toggle boxes again I'm going to select daily. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial and make sure that you take some time to view the other tutorials on the MetaTrader 4 application from Alpari. You can actually find links to those here on the Alpari website. 
Also, keep in mind, one of the best pieces of advice I can give anyone when they're trying to learn a new trading methodology or a new trading application or uh, just learning how to operate in the Forex itself is to take some time every time you've seen something new to repeat it yourself. So if you want to make sure that you can remember how to turn auto scroll off or how to make sure that your market watch window has all of the instruments available in it, just take some time right now, start your MetaTrader 4 application and try to repeat those procedures. It'll help you remember what to do when you need to be able to do it. This is John Jagerson for Alpari Academy.